little closer to everybody. So what we're feeding them is a special zoo diet. It's called crock chow. It's just freeze dried dog poop. So, mm. No, I'm just kidding. I'm joking. It's not, it's not dog poop. Looks like it. But uh, these little biscuits are just jam packed full of vitamins, nutrients, all that stuff. And all the stuff that they need to be happy and healthy. What uh, makes you really think that he's going to attack you right now? Because he's not attacking me. No, but, what? but would he? Or he's fed no. enough? Or is more. Was he raised in the water? Well, he's not fat. Um, he's uh, like alligators are real stocky. This is probably the most physically fit alligator in captivity in the state of Florida. I'd put money on that. I'd go toe to toe with anybody. Um, and that's just because we keep him exercising and all that stuff and he's, he's moving around. Right now he's kind of acting a little lazy. I mean, if he wanted to really get up and go, he could for sure. Does he but, have all the teeth that a normal alligator does? Because it doesn't yeah. look like that many teeth right well, now. Some of them, they, they lose them and regrow them all the oh. time. So they have eternal baby teeth. So they're constantly losing and regrowing some. So the duckweed kind of almost acts like plaque a little bit too. So you can't quite see all the teeth. But oh, yes, okay. they're in there. Um, but alligators aren't aggressive towards humans at all anyway. So an alligator's not ever going to just charge over at you to try and get you, it, to try and kill you and eat you anyway. Um, they act defensively. So, I mean, if he were, if he felt threatened and he was trying to protect something, then he might charge over just to try and, uh, you know, chase you off or, or whatever the case is. But I'm not worried about it with him too much. I mean, it's not like I'm not paying attention to him for one, but with training changes that whole scenario. All it is is communication. So when you build, you're not going to tame him. You're not going to domesticate him. So I'll make that really clear. But um, training an alligator or a crocodile is the same, really kind of the same thing as training people or, you know, like coworkers. You don't have to speak the same language. You can get somebody to wear a silly hat just by communicating some kind of benefits uh, and going back and forth. And the more trust and respect you build between each other, the better that relationship's gonna be and, and the, the, the more likely they're going to really take to a lot of the training and stuff. So a lot of the stuff that we do here is more or less just really simple training just to make the overall environment stress-free for them and safer for them and us and the viewing public pretty much. So everything knows that the bridges are off limits and these fences are basically off limits. So he can come over here and hang out up in the front and we kind of encourage it, but he's gonna ignore anything that's going on on the other side, uh, cause there's just no benefit there. Right. So, but I mean, as far as him, you know, I could do all this shock and awe stuff and oh my gosh, look at this, it's all crazy and just not explain any of it. And everybody be like, oh my gosh, that guy's crazy. Or he has this weird otherworldly relationship. He's a gator whisperer. But no, not, I mean, sort of, but not really. I just know how to communicate. Um, and the more clearly I can communicate, uh, the quicker he's gonna pick up on it. Hold, hold, nope, hold. The other thing too is understanding behavior in general and the animal. So I have been working, you can't hit that. You're supposed to hold right there. What? What's the problem? What? What's that noise? Wow. He's saying he's mad about something. He's not getting enough food. No, it's not that. Because this isn't a feeding. This is just a treat. More, yeah, it's just like tossing twenty-dollar bills to to somebody. <laughs> just be like, hey, look, all I want you to do is just do nothing. Okay, Here's yeah. twenty bucks, you know. But he's not happy with the twenty that he already got. So, what what's the deal? Do you just not want me to do what I was gonna do today? I'm gonna go over here. No, no, you stay over here. Go this way. The other thing that I was getting ready to talk about is just um, working around alligators and crocodiles. The, you know, one, you need to understand the behaviors. Two, the mechanics of the animal. Basically, meaning what are the extremes of their limitations, like physically and otherwise. Like so. Each individual animal, just kind of like people, some people are more flexible than others, but there's an extreme to which that can go. Like, people can only bend a certain amount in one given direction, or jump so high, or do these things, you know. Um, so even the highest jumper on the planet still cannot jump 20 feet straight up in the air. You know what I mean? So, they might be able to jump real high, you know, some of those basketball players can do that, but 
his limitations. So I can walk around him pretty comfortably knowing full well that even if he spins or lunges while he's spinning, he can only reach a certain distance. So as long as I stay outside of that, like I have an invisible circle that I'm looking at. As long as I stay out of that strike range, I can comfortably kind of walk around him and work around him um, and not really be in any immediate danger. All right, we're gonna try something, okay? So you sit there, hold it, hold, hold, okay? Hold, because I wanna go over there, hold. Hold, 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 go for it. Hang out right there. Now normally what I'd be doing from back here, and today I, I don't think he's in the mood for it, so I'm not gonna push him too much, but uh, start rubbing on his tail. What I've been working with him a lot with, and some of the other ones is just some of the touch. And it's more, it's just desensitizing. It's desensitization, it's a long word. But so I'm rubbing him on a tail here, you know, and I'm kind of, he's kind of moving a little bit, he's getting used to it. But uh, as I rub him on the tail, the more that he just kind of tunes that out and doesn't care, and it doesn't bother him, uh, the better it is. And I will explain that in a second. But they are, they are way more sensitive than people realize. I mean, they feel pleasure and pain just like we do. They have their own personal likes and dislikes just like we do. Some people don't like being just randomly scratched on the butt. So, I mean, if he's upset by that, I don't necessarily blame him. But uh, the reason for this uh, and the reason I do some of the training that allows me to get real up close and personal with them. Come this way. Come this way. Come on. No, not that way. I'm going to walk that way. The reason I'm doing this is because he's getting, he'll get used to this, and one day he is going to get sick. He could get injured doing something. I don't know. I mean, you know. Just, so you'll have to be careful. Yeah, I mean, right? there's, you always want to expect the unexpected. So. But either way, it's guaranteed every living thing is gonna get sick at some point in time. Now, traditionally, uh, if he gets sick or a crocodile or anything else, you have to catch and restrain that animal so that you can safely get around it or have the vet come in um, and take a blood sample or give a medicine or any of those things. And that's not fun. That adds a lot of stress. I mean, it's, it's not fun for him. I'm not saying it's not fun for us to go and catch a big giant dinosaur, because that is kind of fun sometimes, but adds a lot to his plate um, so just like us we like to go to the doctor you get in there doc I don't feel so good and we leave with a lollipop after we get our medicine we like that we don't want to get tackled by three people and tied down to a table that's just not any fun so by doing this like right now even though he's hissing a little bit and he's like kind of saying